good. I'm ready. I'm ready okay. to go. Are we live? Okay. It looks like we're recording. No, no, we're we're live now. We're live now. Okay. Great. One second. One second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, this evening, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you're dialing in from. Uh, we have SoundMS four. We're glad to, uh, that you're able to join us. And hope everybody is getting used to the new normal uh, for work from working from home. Uh, for those of you who weren't able to join us on our March 20th webinar, my name is Michael Green, and I am the Director for Government Relations and Strategic Development at SANMS4 based out of Washington, D.C. I am happy to have my colleague again, Susmita Sen, uh, with me. Susmita leads SANMS4's HR advisory practice group out of our New Delhi office. Uh, Susmita advises some of the world's leading universities, nonprofits, and businesses on employment best practices and implementing those practices on the ground in India. Uh, from an administering insurance schemes uh, to advising on salary benchmarking and tracking labor compliance, Susmita and her team act as a local partner to global HR teams managing India from afar. Uh, since we last uh, address the audience in just about two weeks. There have been many developments on the ground in India. For one, uh, Prime Minister Modi announced a 21-day lockdown, uh, which is set to end on April 14th. The last time we spoke, work from home was trending towards best practice uh, and uh, is now mandatory for businesses that want to continue their operations, um, except for um, those being essential. Um, SANMS4, um, I know we have a number of our clients on the, on the line and we have uh, been in touch with them on a uh, regular basis, but we moved to remote work about a week before the lockdown. So our teams are, you know, getting used to the new normal of working from home and we'll get a little bit into uh, that and address some of the cultural aspects and challenges specific to India. Um, but our work for our clients has gone forward um, uninterrupted. Um, we have allotted one hour, but expect to get through our presentation and remarks uh, well ahead of that. Uh, we've moved to having more of a kind of discussion-based format. Um, so you'll notice we won't have slides, um, but we will be posting all of our speaker notes onto our website at the end of uh, the presentation so that you can refer to those um, detailed notes uh, if there is anything you miss. Uh, for questions, I will manage those through the chat box. If you have company-specific issues, please feel free to flag these. The fact is that the speed of change we are uh, all managing is unprecedented, and uh, it's important that we all communicate and learn from each other as uh, the situation Holds. Um, so with that, I'll kind of get into the, our first question. Uh, for Susmita. Um, so Susmita, can you kind of bring the audience up to speed on where India stands in its COVID-19 response, particularly since Prime Minister uh, announcement? Yes, Michael. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening depending on where you're joining us from. And thank you very much for joining us uh, in this session. Uh, we've been having a series now, the third one in a row, uh, in the third week um, of uh, the COVID-19 situation evolving, I mean, quite in an unprecedented pace, I would say. And we all know that it's a global humanitarian challenge now. Uh, just like Michael mentioned, I mean, the, I mean, last to last week i mean with the first time we were hosting this webinar prime minister modi had just um, uh, kind of announced the janta curfew uh, on the 22nd and uh, he was quick um, and that was a great move to test the sentiment of the masses and that was quickly followed through by a complete lockdown for three weeks 21 days up until the 14th of april uh, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is regularly coming up with updates on ways to maintain hygiene, practice social distancing, and also 
a directory of helpline numbers across states to access the healthcare aid from the government. On the other side, the Disaster Management Act has been in, invoked, giving wide powers to the Ministry of Health and Welfare to enhance preparedness and containment of the virus. Various state governments have also classified COVID-19 as an epidemic disease, thereby under the Epidemic Disease Act, giving local administration authority to impose various containment measures such as quarantine, closures, and surveillance. The central and state governments we all know have been issuing numerous advisories and regulations on matters of travel, employment, and healthcare. The latest in the series being circulation of false information on social media being a punishable offense. All mall supermarkets have shut down and only essential item shops will remain open for limited time periods. And any person disobeying the orders of the government in this regard shall attract the punishment as per section 188. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, the finance uh, ministry has also come up with some relief measures in terms of extending the filing dates of ITR, GST, linking of PAN and Aadhaar and some other relief for big and small enterprises, um, alongside uh, the stimulus package announced for the poor and the underprivileged. Uh, what is noteworthy is the government stepping up its relief towards the employer community. And this is the only one that is there to highlight in terms of the PF contribution on the employer side uh, being paid up, paid by the government as economic assistance for all uh, organizations that are 100 people or less. Thank you, Sushita. Thank you, Sushita. And just some, some house, uh, housekeeping, I'm, I'm following the chat box. For those who are having issues with audio, um, just uh, if you could log in uh, to the platform through Chrome, uh, we found that has uh, resulted in better results. And then just, I think, also check on your, we'll, we'll get to this later in the presentation, but check on your local bandwidth and connectivity. Um, uh, so, Susmita, I think prior to the PM's announcement, states were taking action requiring offices to limit the amount of staff in the office, for example. I think Karnataka and Maharashtra were a few of the early movers with that. Um, the lockdown has now forced all businesses effectively to move to remote working platforms. How have companies been managing this change from your perspective? That's right, Michael. So um, yes, I mean, from, uh, like you said, uh, very rightly, rightly said, uh, from, um, uh, you know, work from home being a best practice, it's uh, the new normal right now. Uh, but for some sectors, uh, the work from home proposition is posing uh, quite a number of implementation challenges as it has a direct bearing on the business operations. So, for example, uh, you know, manufacturing units where workers are required to be physically present at the production sites and services sectors like banking and IT, where a lot of confidential data is used uh, and remote working can perhaps enhance security threats uh, is, uh, are some of the challenges these sectors are uh, really finding difficulty uh, navigating through. Uh, but other than that, uh, for the rest, the coronavirus pandem pandemic has fundamentally changed the way uh, we uh, operate, uh, perhaps for the foreseeable future. So as governments and businesses around the world profess isolation, social distancing, remote working is the new reality for most of us. Um, uh, most questions the employers need to ask themselves and you know, as they transform their um, and get prepared for work from home as a practice is, you know, are, uh, what steps are needed for staff to be able to continue to work from home? Uh, what is the technology support they'll need? What's the kind of bandwidth they would need? Uh, what are some of the cybersecurity issues they should be addressing ahead in time? Uh, are the servers up to date? Uh, 
uh, are the buildings or their communication channels uh, secured what are the operational costs and challenges etc and are their it is your it policy up to date and adapted for the current situation uh, we know that you know the current situation now two weeks through this lockdown there are organizations there are people who are now complaining of bandwidth issues connectivity challenges etc uh, because typically now i mean if we look at a situation a uh, family of four with two kids on zoom sessions having classes um, having their school classes on zoom um, the parents on calls with different geographies etc working so there are i mean these are real issues and posing connectivity challenges um uh, for individuals and that needs to be seen and rectified through um though the mobile and internet penetration in india has been quite far reaching and quite ahead in time uh, there are staff members who are also dealing with connectivity challenges etc and uh, and how they are kind of coping with them is by uh, using their mobile hotspot um, to stay connected all the time and uh, michael if this experiment does take off well with business as usual outcomes many organizations are already contemplating uh negotiation with their office setups being trimmed down infrastructure real estate costs being trimmed down etc that's interesting and yes i think um you know in terms of the advice and you know that's coming from from i think governments and uh uh coming from many different angles um speaking with um you know landlords and um trying to um negotiate some of these vendor contracts is something that um all businesses should be looking to do during these um lean times um for the next question what are some of the challenges uh you see organizations facing with the shift to work from home um and what are some of the solutions that you suggest i think you kind of hit on this a little bit but if you could just expound more specifically on the work from home component and the, the that's right michael so one part of the question and as we just addressed um, earlier um, in this conversation was about uh, you know does uh, uh, on dealing with concerns like cyber security data sensitivity etc et and ensuring all employees have full access to resources equipments etc so that they are productive for the role they are set out to play but the bigger question most uh, organization leaders managers etc asking uh, is how do they make this shift and when i say make this shift it's about you know managing remote teams is the big quandary they are dealing with so uh, managers uh, very often i'm posed with this question of how often should i communicate with my with my team or without uh, you know uh, without allowing myself to be really micromanaging their work uh, should it be video or phone or instant messaging um, etc so all these are kind you know questions that are coming up to me so my answer to that is um, it's uh, something evolving it's how you deal with your teams etc so set smaller milestones for evaluation for monitoring your teams uh, work and provide feedback on a more regular and consistent basis you've got to help your people understand how to do this and give them the confidence that this will work newer employees those working on critical projects etc are people who need more of your support more of your time so ensure you build that into your schedule remember too that you can do you can do fun things virtually so your happy hour coffee breaks lunch together etc can continue online if you choose it that way all these things can continue the connection that you had in the office and there's ample research showing that virtual teams can be completely or equally as uh, productive co-located ones in terms of you know building trust and collaboration between the teams it just requires a certain discipline to get there uh the next point that i'd like to talk about michael is on the psychological effect of remote working uh 
because um, human beings we know are you know gregarious uh, species and we like uh, to be social we like to be connected and um, a lot of uh, uh, people are now coming to me and you know asking me you know how do we have a uh, water cooler conversations or coffee conversations etc with our colleagues uh, which we are feeling which of which we are finding a huge void with uh, a gap with right now how do we create those virtually so for to that you know my answer is uh, very simple that you know uh, keep your live phone conversations video conferences on for as many times as possible as a boss you must encourage people to have uh, you know uh, to have live to go on video chats with peers uh, with teams etc people are not really able to figure this out organically but managers need to coach them through this and figure out because this is very critical for the emotional uh, and mental well-being of um, individuals the next point is uh, all about the culture so you know when you are working remotely you somewhere feel extracted away from the mothership and therefore here is where the leadership and the uh, line managers have a low role to play in terms of keeping the communication channels on all the time so your emailing sharing people anecdotes updates etc more often than you would do earlier um productivity how do you monitor productivity how do you um you know know that your people are doing the right things um uh you know when you're not um really physically present together uh the answer is very simple here trust your staff and make your goals outcome based there's no reason to believe that in the new environment people won't do the work that they've been assigned to always already so remote work need not only do work but also you know they need to collaborate so we have enterprise wide social media tools that allow us to store and capture data have many conversations etc so utilize leverage all the tools that you have all the technology support that you have to ensure that you and your teams are productive and finally last but not the least i'd like to touch touch upon the uh, home and the cultural aspect in india which is a little different from uh the west uh, in terms of having a lot of um domestic help uh, you know drive driving help etc that uh, in india we are kind of uh, spoiled with and with the current lockdown we are having to deal with child care home care elder care blurring boundaries between work and home etc uh, and having to do manage all of this within the time period so the answer to this is for line managers to be more empathetic uh, to be compassionate to allow, make allowances and accommodate people uh, at different time zones uh, not necessarily between the 9 to 6 uh, period uh, but be more flexible with people when you're uh, you know talking to them making uh, calls um, or you need time for uh, any feedback etc over to you michael yeah thanks susmita i think um uh just want to address a couple of questions that have come in and and back to this kind of work from home and managing bandwidth and internet um this question has come in about uh, are mobile plans and use of hotspots typically fully paid by the company or is this an additional allowance reimbursement for, uh, an employer should fund so how how are how are companies managing this So the, uh, the internet from home issue. Yes, Michael. So it's a good question. Um and like I said, we're all learning and evolving through this process. So what I know is I mean um I mean there are no physical ways of doing things whatever is remote uh leave functional and operational is what we kind of uh, uh, can lay our hands on right now. So uh, the mobile hotspot thing is the most accessible support that organizations are willing to 
uh, provide to their employees to help them be productive and also building out reimbursement guidelines around um, this thing. So this is a cost on a mobile hotspot uh, or data connectivity, et cetera, expanding the internet data pack, et cetera, is all that the organizations are willing to uh, top up um, on reimbursement uh, policy for their employees. And in terms of use, of, so I guess the hotspot, well, what are some of the other ways? I know I remember, you know, all staff that were kind of traveling quite frequently uh, when I was in India were using dongles. So, or, you know, how is that? What are the other ways that uh, companies and employers are providing that support outside so, kind of leveraging everybody's mobile device? Right, Michael. So, again, like I said, uh, the dongle uh, uh, is a good option, but uh, under the lockdown, you know, it has a procurement cycle uh, and the operations team typically in the organizations are, uh, you know, kind of facilitate this process and there's a procurement process that runs through, which needs a lot of physical intervention, but under the current lockdown, it's not possible. So while organizations are now mapping as to, you know, what could be their uh, requirement in terms of dongles, etc., uh, in times to come to support work from home. Um, that's not an option they can operationalize under the lockdown. Immediately. Yes. Yeah, immediately. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the second question, maybe I'll take a first crack at it and, and turn it over to you, Susmita, if you have any other sure. uh, points on it. But you know, what are the future predictions? Uh, would lockdown open uh, all, you know, after the lockdown, will all states open? Um, and will my remote employees uh, reach my organization after the 14th of April? Um, I said, I'll take the first crack at that just because mm -hmm. um, uh, I think everywhere in the world is, is kind of in a state of, um, Kind of wait and see and governments are taking the necessary precautions to try to limit the long-term impact of uh of the virus on their respective countries so uh in terms of being able to say whether people will be back april 14th i can say in the u.s for example you know the state of virginia which is right across the river from where i am uh they have a i don't know if it's locked down but they've they've kind of extended their guidelines to June 10th. So um, I do not think that this will be something that is resolved in, um, you know, a couple of weeks, um, you know, and I think best case scenarios are, you know, serious improvement in a few months. Um, but maybe I'll just kind of stop there and, and excuse me to, if you have any other kind of perspective. Uh, yeah, so that. Michael, yes, so uh, in India too, I mean, uh, I think, um, uh, like you said, I mean, it's extremely, the, the situation around is evolving, uh, rapidly changing, and uh, uh, extremely uncertain. So there can be no predictions around it. So the first uh, point of visibility we have is off the 14th of April, uh, and the organizations are gearing up for work beyond that. Uh, but um, simultaneously, what we need to be cognizant of is to keep, uh, uh, you know, an eye open on the COVID curve and uh, how soon is it rising, is it spiking, or is it on a flattening mode? And um, that really will dictate uh, uh, the longevity of uh, the lockdown, uh, whether things will open up beyond the 14th or not. So we have still another week, 10 days to go before uh, we can, uh, can make more conclusive predictions around, uh, you know, work back from uh, offices, etc. Okay. I think I'll move to, you know, our, our the, through our presentation a little bit. I think some of the questions that are coming through about kind of, um, you know, specific sectors um, that might be hiring during this time and also, um, you know, impact on, on bottom and top lines, uh, we'll get to as we move through the presentation. So if not, I'll return to those questions. So thank you and keep, keep them coming in. Um, in terms of the, 
uh, want to switch to labor compliance and any laws that you can flag with respect to employment that has come out as, as a part of the government of India's response to COVID-19. Uh, if you could provide kind of a, an update on where that stands. Yeah, so uh, Michael, so there have been uh, many of these, uh, there are several advisories uh, that have been uh, coming through state government, uh, Ministry of Labor, etc. Uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs has issued a notification on payment of wages on time. And several state governments have made several advisories on, you know, no wage cuts, no pay cuts, etc. Uh, leave uh, for all uh, state of uh, Karnataka has given uh, that all uh, COVID uh, uh, positive patients need to be uh, uh, entitled to uh, paid leave for 28 days, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, these are all uh, the advisories. But what really um, is a, sign a significant move that is made recently is the bill introduced in the parliament called the Terminated Employee Welfare Bill, uh, which proposes that if any employee is asked to leave due to reasons of slump in the economy, political instability, technological changes, court orders, or business insolvency, and so on, then the employee should be given unemployment benefits with assured income for nine months, which is considered sufficient time for them to find a new job. The bill is only tabled right now, but not passed in the parliament. And these, just to be clear, these unemployment benefits would be coming from the central government or how are those benefits being administered? No, 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 no. Those, so these employment, the benefits, so if these are central government employees, they will be administered by the central government. If they are, uh, you know, uh, employees of uh, private and public sector organizations, then the organization uh, holds responsibility for the severance for the nine months in case of uh, a layoff uh, or termination that uh, is being um, discussed here in this bill. Okay, and what is the what is the, you know, I think legislation is moving at lightning speed across the world what is mm -hmm. the um you know what 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 is kind of the outlook for that bill is that something that is being really pressed to be passed um within you know a week or is it something that you think will take take more time than that so i i i seriously think um uh, michael that this bill will take uh, time to um, you know, um, uh, get its uh, approval, if at all, uh, because there is a serious lobby from uh, uh, different uh, public um, private sector organizations and their consortiums, etc. Um, and the lobby uh, is about uh, no serious, um, um, you know, moves uh, made towards uh, employers uh, to, uh, you know, incentivize retention, etc as they um, move through tough times um, with the slump in economy, with business taking a hit, with um, their revenues being, uh, you know, really low, et cetera. So uh, there are no serious moves. And therefore, this is something uh, the government will really need to seriously think through um, if uh, before they approve. Okay. Um, you know, as we, you know, we just ended, um, the last fiscal year and day two on the new fiscal year. Um, so getting to some of the nitty gritty issues of managing uh, managing teams on the ground. Um, if performance reviews have not already happened, what's best practice for conducting performance appraisals at this time? And I guess a follow on to that, how are companies managing salary, uh, salary revisions, bonus payouts and other things like that? Very good question and something that I've been dealing with uh, on a real-time basis um, in the past few weeks now. Uh, as uh, most organizations in India follow the PACE uh, performance cycle uh, April to March, and therefore a lot of these organizations, um, this is the time that, um, uh, you know, it was uh, due for appraisals, performance assessments, etc. So the 
typical question was, you know, in case, uh, so if there is no visibility of the way forward, you know, how do we, how do we perform uh, assessments? And typically uh, with the lockdown and businesses having suffered a great setback, um, leaders are currently in the process of revisiting many people and business decisions with extreme uncertainty. Uh, and managing costs has become very, very critical at this stage. But they, but at the same time, my point, my advice is that you know employers um, need, need to, at this time to retain their best talent and also support their staff and ensure their job security. So how do talent and business leaders strike a balance, and what compromises should be worth taking for them? Uh, the COVID nineteen impact on appraisals has been quite drastic. Uh, but there is an inherent need, I say, to conduct performance assessments for all staff to know and get an understanding of how they really have fared against the goals and KRAs that have set, been set in the past year because they've already concluded that performance cycle. It's time to now follow through and while managing expectations and addressing the critical question on how pay and rewards increments, et cetera, are likely to get impacted during these times. More than immediate reward, I believe top talent needs to be told that they are top talent and the communication on the ratings is a step in that direction. Globally, companies can see the economic downturn as quite imminent and therefore they are trying to really balance out the capac their capacity to pay versus the need to pay. And um, uh, the current situation is that, you know, there is some organizations are going ahead with the bonus because um, bonus payouts, because that's not that's something that their employees, their people have already performed in the last pay cycle. So what can really, uh, you know, change is what is going forward. But the bonus and the payouts for the past performance is what is being kept intact. Having said that, there are two trends that are kind of emerging as uh, post-assessment, um, um, you know, trends. One is of, uh, you know, muted salary increases, um, anticipating tough quarters ahead and businesses getting further impact. There is a chance that employers uh, you know, are giving very low uh, percentage uh, revisions, etc., or no revisions at all, at all. And the second one is on delaying uh, increments by at least a quarter. So further, um, employers are continuing to monitor the situation and buying time, buying, you know, kind of deferring the process of increment by at least a quarter to ensure that you know they do not go bust in making in taking wrong decisions but what i say michael here is that you know what is important during this period is to have a compassionate and informed approach as they strike a balance between optimizing salary costs and ring fencing their top talent uh, and what is key here is to have consistent communication and transparency through this process yeah, I think that is, uh, you know, something that I've, I've kind of been seeing across a number of organizations, including our, our, our own, is that consistent communication. I think now is the time for leadership to be uh, visible, uh, especially when staff are, um, you know, uncertain of what the future might hold. I think there's, a, there's kind of a balance there of, you know, weighing the business realities, but also wanting to um, ensure that the staff that you have on board remain productive. And I think for people to remain productive, they want to know or have some sense of what the company's current position is and where that company uh, and what that company is doing um, in light of the situation. So that communication, I think, is um, very, very important. Um, I think more, more housekeeping uh, in terms of HR 
HR processes? Um, how are companies categorizing and managing leads? Um, and are there any implications from uh, the insurance side of things, insurance benefits? Yeah. So leave obligations in India are, uh, as we all know, are dictated by the state-specific shops and establishment act guidelines. Uh, but in the current circumstances, employers should analyze their legal obligations to provide employees with leave in the event of sickness or disability to work and evaluate whether their policies need to be adjusted for the current circumstances. Companies should consider under which circumstances they would want to extend or expand benefits and protections, and they should evaluate their level of income protection for employees on leave by perhaps adjusting benefit plans for employees who exceed their sick day allotment in order to support sick employees who must stay at home. So uh, in case an employee tests positive for COVID owing to travel undertaking, uh, undertaken for official purposes, he or she is entitled to pay leave owing to the Workman's Compensation Act and its interpretation in these cases. Uh, this has been formally announced by the Karnataka government, but um, nowhere else. But uh, we urge all employees, therefore, to kind of, you know, look at the legal nuances before they uh, rework the policy changes on leaves, etc., cetera, uh, or make any edits to it. So any, uh, like I said, any employee who tests positive because of um, the post having an official travel should be entitled to uh, the 28 days of paid leave. Uh, in case of providing care to sick family members, uh, organizations um, uh, are free to follow you know their regular leave policies uh, which entitles them to and um, individuals to casual leave sick leaves etc uh, but there is an additional nuanced uh, effect here we all know that currently in the lockdown situation um, you know children uh, are all all stacked up home etc and uh, as per the Maternity Benefit Act 2017, which extends uh, a legal requirement for a crash facility, uh, that is not uh, being, uh, you know, uh, applicable because of the lockdown situation. But as an alibi to that, organizations need to extend uh, additional relaxations in terms of leave or, uh, you know, relaxations and work hours, etc to accommodate employees who need to take care of, uh, uh, you know, offsprings, uh, little children uh, at home, etc. cetera. Um, on the benefit side, it's about ensuring all staff members are covered under uh, their insurance schemes for COVID-19. And mostly, um, uh, in my experience, in the last couple of weeks, most uh, insurance uh, um, plans have uh, certified coverage for COVID-19 patients. Um, this is also time to relook at insurance schemes uh, for organizations that have not yet, uh, you know, extended insurance benefits to uh, their temporary staff members or, you know, contract staff members, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Another point here, um, Michael, is that, you know, for organizations that have their operations have come to a grinding halt, uh, for example, airlines, travel jobs, sales jobs, etc. Many employers are seeking recourse by advising staff to avail their annual or earned leaves, uh, you know, um, and making payments and because annual or earned leaves are paid leaves. Um, my uh, suggestion here is to kind of get into an agreement with uh, the employees as they exercise this, because um, this might be construed as uh, a pay cut uh, in abeyance because uh, uh, annual leaves or uh, earned leaves are actually incashable uh, at the time of separation. Uh, by most organizations and policies and also by the Shops and Establishment Act. And therefore, this may be construed as 
uh, you know, a forceful way of um, trying to cut down on individual salaries. So organizations that are mandating this need to be mindful of um, uh, what kind of legal implications uh, uh, they might be risked with and therefore what is the recourse they need to take ahead of time. Thanks, Susmita. Uh, just want to address a couple of questions that have come in um, about employees with disabilities um, and also, uh, you know, I, I guess I'll start there. So, I mean, how are, how are employers managing, you know, whether it's an employee with disability or just based on their certain skill set are not, um, you know, able to work from home? Um, so how is that how is that being managed by uh, organizations? So um, Michael, again, uh, like I said, I mean it's uh, you know very situation specific, etc. So uh, employees with disabilities, I would think uh, uh, can still I mean work from home can still be uh, managed for them unless, uh, for example, the task they are performing uh, is something that is um, of no no relevance at this time. For example, like I said, you know, the uh, airline industry is badly stricken. The travel jobs, the people working in travel industry, etc. World over, um, you know, people are now canceling all their holidays um, that they would have uh, now planned in the next uh, couple of months, etc. So. Uh, that uh, industry is going into uh, is quite heavily impacted under uh, um, uh, the current circumstances, and therefore, um, how employees are, uh, you know, how employers manage uh, such employees uh, under these current situations is quite a tricky place to be in because um, they have to uh, toe the fine line between. Um, what they can support, um, you know, monetarily versus and for how long versus uh, given the, uh, you know, economic impact on their business versus, you know, how um, they can be compliant uh, with the adv advisories that are streaming in. So I think just picking up on that, what, again, another question from the, from the group, um, can you share more about the terminated employee welfare guidelines? Well, there is um, nothing uh, beyond that uh, except what I mentioned in terms of that being uh, tabled in the parliament uh, right now. And uh, like I said, uh, and I kind of, and, re and I reiterate, the reason the bill is tabled, so traditionally, um, historically, uh, all labor laws in India have been tilted in favor of uh, employees to protect their rights and um, ensure that no employer uh, is able to discriminate or make any allowance for uh, you know exploitation of uh, employees at any point uh, so under um, uh, that being the overarching philosophy uh, the uh, uh, terminated employee welfare um, uh, you know bill is now being tabled uh, which protects the employee's right to, uh, you know, employment. Uh, and so in case of adverse circumstances, if the employee uh, stands to lose his or her job, uh, their needs, employers need to provide protection by paying, uh, you know, nine months of uh, payment uh, in lieu thereof. Uh, and that um, time period has is construed as time enough wherein an uh, employee can uh, seek uh, another relevant opportunity. Got it. Okay. Um, and, and one more question, I think, kind of related to insurance um, and mm -hmm. also just how the healthcare system is responding. Um, is telemedicine widely available and are those consultations covered by insurance and our companies setting up telemedicine arrangements in response. Um, we have seen some new hospital indemnity plans being offered by insurance companies. 
So that's right, Michael. So these are again, like I said, the, uh, with the evolving situation, insurance companies are very quickly uh, revising and refining their policies as well and making them more compliant um, uh, for uh, employees. So given the current situation where um, and where you know uh, people are uh, being discouraged from visiting clinics or hospitals, etc. Um, uh, you know, if, unless it's, an, it's a serious case or a serious medical condition for simple flu-like symptoms of a cough, cold, etc. Employees um, or any, uh, I mean, anybody is being discouraged from uh, visiting these premises, and more and more. Uh, tele uh, uh, facilities or uh, doctors on call, etc., are kind of uh, provisioning for uh, facilitation of medical support. So most um, of these uh, organizations. So um, uh, coming back to um, your question, Michael, um, insurance coverage is typically uh, on hospitalization, etc. So. If it is a telecall support with uh, medic medic medication that's prescribed, that is typically not covered under any you know uh, medical um, scheme, any uh, mediclaim policy, etc. And that stands for tele uh, uh, you know support as well. But um, having said that. Um, in case it's a COVID-19 situation, the individual tests positive, or um, uh, there is a serious medical condition where a tele uh, support um, uh, kind of gradually evolves into a hospitalization case, etc. Then under the governing policy, all hospitalization charges, etc., would be taken care of by, uh, would be covered by the prevailing insurance scheme. Sounds good. And we have, um, you know, our presentation, uh, again, we will be putting up on our website in terms of the speaker notes. So we'll have all of the information that Susmita uh, is sharing. We are getting a number of questions, and I'm just mindful of everyone's uh, time. And Susmita and I will stay on past the hour, but want to get through um, uh, the presentation. Um, one of the questions that came in is just about protecting balancing kind of top line and bottom line. Uh, I know we talked about um, some of the measures that are being put in place as we go through the performance review cycle uh, in terms of, um, you know, freezing increments and other things. We're also seeing executives from leading com companies around the world take pay cuts um, while workforces are being, you know, furloughed. What developments are happening around this topic? And what are some of the best practices that you're seeing? Yes, Michael. So we can see that the while a worldwide containment effort to halt the spread of the virus is on, stock markets globally are plummeting as well. And if the current global and domestic economic slowdown persists, it will impact demand and realization. And with the crisis deepening, it is undoubtedly set to pose many challenging situations for the workforce. Uh, the International Labour Organization has called for urgent, large-scale and coordinated measures across three pillars, protecting workforce uh, workers in the workplace, stimulating the economy and employment, and supporting jobs and incomes. There have been several advisories, like I already mentioned earlier, um, uh, to public and private organizations on no wage cuts, no job cuts, etc., with the labor ministry insisting that termination of employees from job or reduction in wages in this scenario would only further deepen the crisis. So essentially, this is time for organizations and leaders to take a very hard look at the cost structures and see what can be trimmed, including vendor costs, operational costs, infrastructure costs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Globally, the leadership in many organizations have opted for voluntary pay cuts as well to keep all employees at lower levels intact. It's a strong message to send out in times of crisis that we care and we are in it together. People costs, therefore, should be safeguarded for as long as possible. However, but in, in times of duress, 
and with the minimalistic relief measures that you know organizations have from the government organizations might really be pushed to taking some hard decisions and um some of these decisions are uh, essentially uh, what i mentioned you know pay cuts for leadership followed by pay cuts across the levels uh salaries calibrated with reduced work hours a uh, sabbatical for a limited period for uh, employees where they continue to uh, avail of uh, uh, the organization benefits uh, insurance coverage etc and finally in extreme situations uh, you know there could be situations of a layoff uh, it's important to note here that in all the situations that i just mentioned explicit agreement from targeted employees is mandatory uh, this is because there is a gov there is a um a, uh, a letter of contract that employees hold already and if there is any change that's being made to that uh, then uh, there is a chance that employees might uh, you know become a hostile group together and file a petition in labor courts etc uh and in all likelihood all such cases usually uh, have decisions in favor of employees uh, so organizations need to keep the humane side intact uh, to ensure you know losses to individuals are minimized in case they are pushed to take uh, you know very hard decisions thanks dushmita and in terms of Uh, you know, what's your message to leadership, uh, both India-based leadership as well as um, the messaging that's coming from, you know, headquarters? So, Michael, we all know that organizations are, you know, for people, organizations are trusted institutions, and to continue to retain that trust is a humongous responsibility every leader needs to shoulder, and. Um, uh you know therefore in doing so you know demonstrate their humane side the empathy deal with it with empathy etc so um as leaders there are some immediate short term and medium term measures we are not even looking at long term right now uh and we don't have the luxury to do so with the current uh, you know uncertainty that's prevailing around us so some immediate term measures is in terms of safeguarding people employees partners customers through you know requisite safety measures understand understand and align all regulatory changes uh, from time to time in the short term ensure your business continuity by working out alternate models uh, do the financial stress test quickly to prepare for recovery relook at demand and revenue targets and realign uh, opportunities in the emerging scenarios align people with all your changed plans in the medium term you need to perhaps restructure the business reposition yourself in the market um, with the change in consumer behavior and seize every opportunity that comes your way by leveraging your equity and your strengths in the marketplace and in the customer client community that you have in all this it's important like i said to keep the compassion and empathy alive and communicate with all stakeholders customers financiers suppliers etc and most importantly with your people ensure that you know your staff has regular updates on the business the impact and maybe the likely slump slow down etc they have all as updates from the customer sides etc also are you listening enough is a question you need to ask yourself often is there a two way communication are your people feeling heard is there enough empathy and reassurance in your messaging these are some of the you know definitive ticks in the boxes um, that will help conditioning employees uh, in a more implicit and untoward manner in these trying times 
and I'm sure you know any leader who's following through on all these uh, diktats uh, are really doing the right things. Because in the end, Michael, uh, this is you know what you how you treat your employees in these tough times is uh, what will be your brand brand recall for times to come, and that's what is important. Um, uh, for every leader to understand in terms of people first, economic second. Thank you for that. I think um, just getting back to some of the questions, we have several of them that have come in. Um, uh, back to the question about managing leaves. So can employees be asked to take their sick leaves and casual leaves? For example, in our organization, Sick leave can be accumulated up to 40 days, although the same is not, although that, that leave is not taxable. So can employees be asked to take their sick leave or casual leave? So yes, Michael. So again, like I said, I mean, uh, the sick leave and casual leave are entitlements that individuals have uh, for specific purposes and in case um, and they are not in cashable leaves right so uh, they can employers can uh, if if there is a balance of sick and casual leave employers can make uh, you know uh, that allowance to uh, employees um, in case they are um, not working to utilize their sick and casual leave but while being also mindful of the fact that uh, later through the year, in case they really need those leaves for the right reasons, there would be an allowance made for them to utilize them again. On the uh, on utilization of the annual leaves, they are paid leaves, and therefore, again, you know, they are justified. Uh, employers are justified in making uh, use of them while employees are not really operational or not being able to do, do their jobs because of the lockdown situation. However, I mean, my advice is that this needs to be done with the employee's consent because um, uh, if the employee does not agree to do so, they cannot be forced or coerced into doing this because it will be uh, construed as um, uh, an, an attempt to pay cut uh, in the court of law in case it does in case there is a litigation uh, filed at a later date yeah we had a question on that susmita kind of would implementing pay cut by taking consent of the employee not violate the circular of the ministry of industries energy and labor department as well as directives from the commissioner of labor uh, in maharashtra so yes, Michael, like I'm saying, um, there are several advisories and this thing, and they vary from uh, uh, from uh, different uh, jurisdictions, uh, states, etc. Right. So any employee. So why what I said was generic in nature, but employers need to take into consideration the applicable labor law, labor labor laws um, and the legal ramifications of that jurisdiction and that state. Uh, to ensure that they are legally compliant in uh, taking recourse of any, uh, you know, pay cut or any job cut exercise that they are attempting to do. Okay. And uh, another question, I guess, related to that, is there any economic relief for employers that cannot feasibly implement work, uh, remote work due to insufficient bandwidth? especially where the employer is now revenue challenged. Any exclusions comp uh, contemplated for unemployment due to employer hardship? No, Michael, that's the sad story. Uh, uh, and that's where the employer community is uh, lobbying uh, with uh, the government right now uh, for economic relief measures to employers uh, you know, as they see through these hard times where their businesses and the operations are impacted uh, because of the lockdown situation and employees are not productive um, because of uh, the lockdown situation. So the government, um, there are petitions filed.
from the employer community, but the government is yet to react or come out with something conclusive on this. Okay. I'm mindful of time, so I'll, I'll wrap us up. Uh, and, and we do have um, one last question that I can address after, after the hour, but really appreciate everybody taking the time and want to remind uh, that we will be continuing this series of COVID-19 updates in India next week on Wednesday, April 8th. Uh, at the same start time, that discussion will focus more on the tax, finance, and compliance aspects and developments uh, happening in India. As we continue this series, we're also very interested in your feedback. Um, is there more that you would like to see a different perspective? Um, the, is, is the depth too specific, not specific enough? We really try to kind of strike that balance and speak to organizations that have teams currently set up in India and, and want to make ourselves available on a regular basis to address any questions that you may have. Um, so uh, similar to last week's webinar, you can expect a follow-up uh, email coming your way that will include the recording as well as the speaker notes. So all of the details, I think I saw a comment about um, uh, not being able to type up the notes um, fast enough. We have all of those notes and we will be sharing those with all of those who registered. Um, so with that and those who have to move off to their next calls, thank you very much for joining us. I will stay back just to answer, you know, one or two more questions that have come in. Um, so with that, uh, I think another interesting question that came uh, across Susmita was on insurance premiums. So uh, one of our callers, their premium has doubled. Is there any regulation or restriction to set a reasonable amount uh, in terms of, you know, increments? Um, no, I mean, the IRDA guidelines are set to come in now um, and there is uh, no regulation on uh, change in premium. But I'm surprised to hear about the premium doubling. And I would uh, like to look into that and, in, uh, you know, with some more uh, inputs really because um, um just a COVID scenario cannot be doubling uh you know uh, insurance premium um i'm sure there is more to it um, uh, which uh, we are unaware of at this point so i will not be able to give a conclusive answer on what the reasons are uh, but um, there are no regulations on insurance premium but at the same time uh, i do not i haven't heard of any insurance premium that is doubled uh, because of the COVID situation. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I think with that, um, we have addressed all of the questions. So we will sign off and uh, we're happy to um, follow up with anybody who has additional questions. It was really nice to see a number of our clients on the line and a number of friends uh, from India as well. So Thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe and take care. Yeah. Thank you. Stay safe. Uh, stay healthy, everyone. Thanks for joining us today.